In this episode, we'll be shaping our stretchers and crossbar, putting in the mortises for, to receive the crossbar, shaping the cloud lift on the stretchers, and doing the round over for the stretchers on the edges. On the panel router, we've set up a template using the measurement guide that is provided with the panel router uh, to make a mortise template for the stretchers. And you can see I've written on there so that I have no um, problems remembering in the future using a 15 millimeter follower and a quarter inch bit gives me a hole that is a half an inch by three quarters of an inch. And that'll be my through tenon on the, on the crossbar for the stretchers. It also comes out to about 10 millimeters by 17 millimeters, 10 millimeters being perfect for our uh, chisel that we have to square out those holes. For the outside, which is the housing mortise, I can use a four millimeter follower right about there comes to about four millimeters. The full thickness is, is five millimeters. So if I set this in the hole right to about that edge, that'll be my four millimeter that I'm following in the hole. That'll give me, using the quarter inch bit, the hole for my crossbar, which is actually not a full inch. It's a 0.90 by 5 eighths of an inch. It's just happened to be what the smallest of those was. I would prefer it if it was a full inch, but this is a good proportion. So I've also marked this, that this is my stretcher crossbar mortise, the final size of the crossbar mortise using the one quarter inch round over on my crossbar. The setup on the panel router itself, I've got my braces here set at the perfect angle so bringing this up, you can see that my angle is right where I need it when it's um, flat against both of those surfaces. Additionally, I'll be setting up this block here as a backer board so that I don't split the back side as that uh, router bit comes through. Rough side is up. That'll be routed away, away later on. That means that I have the top side of the stretcher, the top side is down against my table. That's my nice flat side. And then I can clamp that in place. There we go. And that'll be a block that just stays in place for all the pieces because it's still going to support the piece where it comes through and shouldn't be a problem. And I'm ready to route that. I'll be doing the outside first. Again, up here it says the four millimeter follower, just as a reminder, so that's the angled one. I'll put that in there. The inset on the sh shallower part needs to be an eighth of an inch. And I'll be adjusting that down here by bringing, bringing the panel router up to the board up on the top, then I can adjust and say I need that to go in one eighth of an inch. And this measurement should stay consistent for all the boards because they're all the same thickness. Set that at one eighth of an inch. That'll give me an eighth of an inch inset. So my router bit is in line with the angle that I'm going to be doing, uh, my crossbar will be coming in at the stretchers. And as it goes from the 1 8 inch farther away point to the back side of the chair, which is narrower, you can see that it gradually gets deeper and deeper. And that way, when I go to assemble my chair, I can put everything in just straight from the sides. <laughs> I'll take out the four millimeter, put in the 15 millimeter follower, and that'll go in that same hole and offset my quarter inch bit to cut out that center mortise for the cross piece. And there we 
have it. So the back side, or the outside, this is where the through tenon will come through. I'll be squaring these holes up for my tenon. And on the inside, you can see where it's um, deeper on one end than on the other. And that accounts for my angle, and it follows this line straight across, right like that. Mortising the opposite side stretchers requires the inverse setup with the angle set opposite from the other leg to ensure that I'm routing the angles correctly on the insides of both of the stretchers. I've got everything marked with the front, matching the front on my template guide. And I'll be routing away the rough side. The smooth side goes against the fence, so that tells me whether it goes with the inside up or the outside up for the opposite side. Next part we're going to do is route the tenons on the ends of our stretchers. So what I've done to begin with is I measured the width and height of my stretchers. And using the formula, I determined what size square to make for my template guide um, using a quarter inch bit and a nine millimeter follower will give me this size of a hole for the house mortise and then using a 22 millimeter follower on the inside of my template gives me the tenon so that's what I'll be doing on the legs. I made sure that after I routed the tenon on the ends of these that that tenon is going to fit very nicely into the hole both length and width wise as well as my housed mortise works perfectly also. So I did run a couple of tests to make sure that I could get the sizing just perfect on that first. For a half an inch tenon, which this ends up being a half an inch thick, I use my normal red templates that come with the Tampana router. 22 millimeter gives me, uh, or four, sorry, a 15 millimeter with a 3 8 inch bit would give me this half inch tenon. chisel which matches the 10 millimeter hole so I always make sure I cut a test piece before I do the final and this is my test hole that I just routed using the quarter inch bit on the outside and the inside and the nine millimeter follower on the outside with a 22 millimeter follower to get the inside offset. Comes out just perfect for my tenons to be able to fit into those for my stretchers. The process for the back legs is similar to the front legs. I'm going to be using the same template, the same bearing guide, and the same router bit. But the difference is that these legs need to be tilted on the table in order to achieve that angled profile. The table will be tilting forward in this direction. I need this side cut deeper, so I have to make sure that I have these laid out on the table in the correct direction and tipping up the correct direction to match what I've done with the chair rails. So to shape the round over on the inside bottom edge of the stretchers, I'm going to be using a spoke shave. <laughs> and the rest of it will be sanded away by hand. To determine the length of the crossbar on the stretchers, I put the chair together. I know it's set in an eighth of an inch for the tenon. This one already has a tenon on it. Matching that up with the mortise, 
I can then line it up with the correct angle, ensuring that it matches on the opposite side. And by bumping this up to where it would just go into this stretcher by an eighth of an inch, I can determine this length over here and ensure that I have plenty of stock to get the exact length from one to the other. The front edge is where it's inset by one eighth of an inch. Rather than use a marking gauge to mark the ends of the crossbars, um, there's a quicker way that I can do that. And that's just taking my measurement, they're all the same length, line this up with my crossbars and mark where the end of this is supposed to go. A square and simply score across. I've already done that once here so I'm not going to mark it again. Then I just rotate this right there and simply draw in right there. Bring the gauge up. And rotate them for the final one. I've set the bandsaw up to cut the outside shoulders of my cross pieces. When I bring it up to the piece, you can see it's just a hair's width too wide. Up and down is fine. It's nice and snug. I've already verified that, that it's perfect fit there. To take off this little extra, because I have the uh, bandsaw set up to cut the outside shoulder with the blade coming over here and the fence on this side, I can just set in a piece of paper shim and to, to gradually bring it out on each side, cutting the outside edge in until I sneak up on the exact perfect width for those. So I take my sticky pad, loosen up my fence. I really don't need much. I'll just put in one shim at a time until I ease in onto that. Mm. Now that'll take off just a fraction there. And I still have just a little ways to go. Looks like it still has just a tiny, tiny bit to go. Maybe one more shim like that and it'll be perfect. Once I have all of my through tenons fitted into the mortises, I'll be taking off the edge of this parallel, of each of the through tenons parallel with the um, stretchers and then doing a slight pillowing to the ends. To get the softer pillowed effect I'm after on the ends of my uh, crossbars, I'm going to be using a pad underneath my sandpaper, starting with 120 and moving up through the grits. I'll just um, drag it along. First thing I want to do is get the end of it completely flat. Okay, so once I have the end of it smooth, without any divots in it, then I can start rounding the edges. So I'm rolling the bar as I go to give it a nice rounded over effect and a little bit of a pillow on the top. So this is my rough form, slightly pillowed on the top and the edges, you can see a little bit in the shading there that it's um, curved over. Just a light pillowing. Because I'm dealing with end grain, I'm going to take this all the way down to 320, which is one grit higher than I'm doing on the flat surfaces.
Zelda.